predicting where the biggest remaining free agent stars will sign are Enzo Kane, Eric Hosmer and Mike Moustakas remain unsigned amid a slow-moving free agent market. App photo, Charlie Riedel welcome to the new year. Do you know where your free agents are? Never before have we seen so many significant free agents unsigned into January. Heck, spring training is only 40-something days away. With 11 of Keith Law's top 15 free agents still out there, let's take a look at where they might land and some of the risks involved with each player. Hugh Darvish, RHP, Law Rank 1, Best Bet, Chicago Cubs, and be surprised, Houston Astros with the Dodgers and Yankees seemingly sitting out the market for a high-priced starter in order to remain under the luxury tax, the bid is for Darvish Limited. The Cubs have added starter Tyler Chatwood and relievers Steve Sishek and Brandon Morrow, but they have room for one big signing, especially after 2017 closer Wade Davis went to the Rockies. Their current estimated payroll of $155 million is about $17 million less than last year's opening day payroll, so Darvish slots in. The Astros aren't desperate for Darvish for 2018, but he would give them a long-term rotation anchor if Dallas Q. Shell departs after 2018 and Justin Belander after 2019, via beware, Darvish will be paid like an ace, but he's more of a six-inning starter these days. His Woba weighted on base average allowed was .289 through pitch 50 but .334 from pitches 51 to 100, and he lasted fewer than six innings in 11 of his 32 starts. Lorenzo Cain, CF2, best bet, San Francisco Giants didn't be surprised New York Mets The Giants are the obvious fit for need though they might end up with a cheaper option such as Jared Dyson trading for Billy Hamilton. Those two, however, don't provide the offensive production of Kane, and the Giants need big improvements, not incremental adjustments, to contend. The Mets have an elite defender in Juan Lagos, but his career ops, on base plus slugging percentage adjusted for league and park factors, is an anemic 84, and if the Mets actually operated like a big money team, adding Kane and receiving better health in the rotation would make them wild card contenders. Buyer beware, Kane still grades as a plus center fielder, but he turns 32 in April. Since 2010, only two players 34 or older have played at least 100 games in center field in one season, Coco Crisp in 2014 and Andres Torres in 2012. If you give Kane a five-year contract, he might not spend all of it in center. Jake Arrieta, RHP, for best bet, Texas Rangers, and be surprised, Washington National Skidborers has a history of waiting out the free agent market, as Max Skertz's $210 million deal with the Nationals in 2015 and Prince Fielder's $214 million deal with the Tigers in 2012 both came in January, among others. Is this a case of Boras waiting? Or are teams simply not interested in Arietta after seeing his war dip from 8.7 in his Cy Young season in 2015 to 3.4 in 2016 to 1.9 in 2017? If the Rangers miss out on Darvish, Arietta makes a lot of sense, and he'd be returning home. He went to high school in Plano, a Dallas suburb. The Nationals, of course, have their own history of signing Bora's clients and have been kicking the tires on adding another starting pitcher. Buyer beware, Arietta averaged 6.9 innings per start in 2015, but that went down to 5.6 in 2017. We all know about his conditioning and injury-free history, but his fastball velocity has dropped from 94.6 to 92.1 during that span. J.D. Martinez, of 6 best bet, Boston Red Sox didn't be surprised, Atlanta Braves a 6-year, $150 million deal for Martinez isn't unreasonable given his projected production over the time. Still, that's a lot of money to give a guy who is already considered a below average defender and would be in his age 35 season in year 6. Maybe that's why the rumors with Martinez have been minimal this offseason. The Red Sox are still his logical landing spot, even after they resigned first baseman Mitch Moreland, Hanley Ramirez would be the DH right now. Long shot, how about the Braves? They need a hitter, they've cleared Matt Kemp off the roster, and they have a young roster that has room to add a big salary. By a beware, Martinez's most similar comp at age 29 was Jason Bay, he had a great run from 2005 to 2009, averaging 31 home runs per season while hitting .279, .378, .515. His last big season came with the Red Sox at age 30. 
Then he signed with the Mets as a free agent and hit just 37 home runs over the last four seasons of his career. Granted, Bay had some injuries, but like Bay, Martinez could be described as a player with old players' skills. Let's see how he ages. Eric Hosma, 1B, 7, best bet, Kansas City Royals, and be surprised, San Diego Padres, do you have Eric Hosma fatigue? I sure do. As has been covered here and elsewhere, there just aren't many great team matches for Hosmer. Barring a complete shocker, such as the Mariners or Angels, if he's going to maximize his money, it probably means returning to Kansas City or taking a chance on the Padres, who seem willing to sign Hosmer and move Will Myers to the outfield. Via beware, Hosmer was much better at the plate in 2017, but that was mostly because of an improved line drive rate, 22.2% in 2017 versus 16.5% in 2016, not because he hit more fly balls, his ground ball rate remained high. That in might be real improvement, but line drive rate fluctuates the most from year to year. Alex Cobb RHP 8 best bet, Philadelphia Phillies didn't be surprised, Cubs didn't take that best bet too seriously, Cobb could land in a dozen places. The Carlos Santana signing an immense flexibility in payroll, however, mean the Phillies could emerge as Cobb's top suitor as they continue to build for 2019 and beyond. If the Cubs consider Darvish's price too steep or if he signs elsewhere, Cobb provides an alternative plan at about half the price. By a beware, Cobb had a nice return after missing nearly two full seasons, going 12-10 with a 3.66 era for the Rays. His strikeout rate, which peaked at 23.2% in 2013, was down to 17.3%, however, and his ground ball rate was down 8% from his pre-surgery numbers. Todd Frazier, 3B9, best bet, New York Yankees didn't be surprised, Mets, there isn't much of a market for third base, especially after the Giants acquired Evan Lingoria to shore up a hole bigger than Crater Lake. If Frazier is willing to take a one- or two-year deal to return to the Yankees, that makes a lot of sense. The Mets currently have Asdrubal Cabrera at third base on the depth chart, but Cabrera could slide over to second to make room for Frazier. By a beware, Frazier hit just .213 in 2017 but drew 83 walks to post a respectable .344 OBP. That was a huge spike in his walk rate, and though that isn't unprecedented for an older player, if his walk rate reverts back to his career norms and his defense slips, he'll be 32, he's a one-dimensional player without much value. Carlos Gomez, of 10, best bet, Rangers didn't be surprised, Toronto Blue Jays Gomez has played well for the Rangers since coming over late in 2016 and while his defense has slipped in center from a few years ago, he's still a better option than Delino De Shields plus Willie Calhoun could be an adventure in left field, so the Rangers need outfield depth. The Blue Jays corner guys are Teosco Hernandez and Steve Pierce, plus maybe Anthony Alford. By a beware, Gomez hit 0 .298, 0 .366, 0 .573 in Texas and just 0 .216, 0 .317, 0 .358 on the road and hasn't been completely healthy since 2014. Logan Morrison, 1B, 11, best bet, Colorado Rockies didn't be surprised, Los Angeles Angels Morrison had a huge power breakout at a relatively late stage in his career and not just because of the rabbit ball. He was one of those players who focused on his launch angle, and as a result, his fly ball rate increased from 32% to 43.4%. The Rockies need to give Nolan Arenado and Charlie Blackman some help on offense, and handing first base to untested Ryan McMahon and bad Ian Desmond isn't going to help. By a beware, Morrison slugged .564 in the first half before fading to .452 in the second half. J. Bruce, RF12, best bet, Blue Jays didn't be surprised, Giants Bruce has hit 69 home runs the past two seasons but he's a tough player to evaluate. He doesn't walk, so his OBPs are low, and his defensive metrics are all over the board, bad in 2016, above average in 2017. Anyway, the Jays and Giants need a corner guy, and Bruce fits for why the team. He's the kind of player teams don't seem to overpay these days, the slugging, low OBP corner outfielder, DH, so a two-year, $30 million deal might be enough. 
by a beware. Aside from being another corner guy with old player attributes, he has hit just 0 0.222, 0 0.276, 0 0.422 against lefties the past two seasons. So you're looking at what could be an expensive platoon corner guy with below average defense. Mike Mustakis, 3B, 13, best bet, Chicago White Sox, don't be surprised, Royals is younger than Frazier but looking at the same limited market for third baseman. With his dead pull swing, he's a perfect fit for Yankee Stadium, but he's also less likely to take a shorter term deal. Teams that need a third baseman, such as Atlanta or Philadelphia, might prefer to wait for 2018 to join the Manny Machado and Josh Donaldson sweepstakes. In other words, Mistakas could end up anywhere. Maybe the White Sox will sign him to join the youth movement, or maybe he'll end up back in KC with his pal Hosmer. By a beware, Mistakas had an interesting 2017, slamming a Royals record 38 home runs. Of the 37 players to hit at least 30 home runs, only Francisco Lindor, Anthony Rizzo and Arenado had lower strikeout rates. Despite those positives, Moustakas OBP was just 0.314, and his defensive metrics weren't good, minus 8 defensive runs saved, perhaps as a result of the knee surgery he had in 2016. Next 10 unsigned, RHP Lance Lynn, 16, C. Jonathan Lucroy, 18, 1B, DH Lucas Duda, 19, LHP Jamie Garcia, 21, 2B Neil Walker, 24, of Austin Jackson, 27, RHP David Hernandez, 28, of John J, 30, RHP Greg Holland, 32, if Eduardo Nunez, 33.